What's up YouTube? Welcome back to Wonderless Films. Today we are starting a new series on this channel. Okay, so the series is going to be called Can YouTube Teach? The purpose of the series is to answer the question, Can YouTube Teach? We will be focusing on subjects um, about filmmaking, photography at the beginning. If it branches off into other things, um, I'll let you know, but that is where we're headed with this series, mainly photography, filmmaking, stuff like that. We're going to be starting with simple subjects, uh, simple topics at the beginning, and probably be heading into more bigger and more complicated subjects and topics, whatever that may be. So how it works, I'm going to start with a topic, um, tell you about the videos that I thought were most helpful with this topic and with learning this topic. Um, we'll go over what I think are the main bullet points of that topic. Um, I won't go into as much detail as the videos, but I will go into some detail. And then after we have learned, we will go and put our knowledge into practice and see if it actually makes us better at that subject slash topic. Okay, so with that being said, this episode is all about photography. Okay, so for photography, I've narrowed it down to three main videos, um, two by Peter McKinnon and one by Mango Street. Um, I think those uh, were the best, uh, the best tips and the best overall videos in form of time and what you would actually learn off of those videos. Okay, so now let's get into uh, the tips and what they taught you through these videos. Basically, uh, I kind of narrowed it down to bullet points, so composition was a huge uh, thing that every video kind of talked about. Um, framing, leaning lines, all that stuff. Um, I encourage you to go watch the videos. I'll link them down in the description. Angles was another big one of just thinking of different angles, not always shooting in one direction or the obvious direction. Maybe get lower, maybe get higher, um, move side to side. Just take a few extra seconds and actually look at the different angles. The other thing that I really think makes your photo stand out um, is shooting through something. Um, I think that's great. It frames up your picture a little bit nicer when you have something closer. Think opposite. Um, don't shoot the same picture that everybody else is shooting. Uh, lighting, um, the big thing is window light um, is very popular when you're just starting out. You don't need big, ginormous studio lights. Um, window light works great. Mind your horizons. Uh, that was a big struggle, I would say, with my beginning of photography, um, was just the horizons. Um, where I would place them, they'd be off, you know, they want to be level. Nail your focus was a pretty big one. Um, making sure that the photo doesn't have too much in it and also it's focused and everything else is complementing that main focus. Don't over or under edit your photos. Um, getting a photo editor on your computer or your phone, um, it's great and the stuff you can do with it is great but your photo starts to go down when you over edit, when you put like three filters on it, or if you put a filter at 100% or all that stuff. It just doesn't make your photo look genuine and real. All right, so I think that is the main bullet points that I thought were most helpful. Now let's get into some examples. So for this, I've taken some pictures in my past that I think are great examples of this um, photography and actually applying these um, steps and bullet points. Also, if you're thinking that I'm already a pretty good photographer, I already know what I'm doing, I didn't know what I was doing in the beginning. If you want to just go to my Instagram and scroll down to the very bottom, my photography was not that good. Okay, so the first example um, from my photography in the past is uh, this picture. I'll put it like here, probably. Yeah. Okay, so what I like about this picture is the horizons. Um, it has nice, le nice level horizons. I um, think that's very well um, done. The composition is very nice, I think. Of course, I'm a little biased. These are my pictures. Um, 
but overall it's a nice balanced picture and that's what I like about this picture. All right, the second photo is this picture. What I like about this picture is the focus. I think the focus has been done very well. Um, it's focused on the phone and the travel um, and the streets. Um, it's framed up nicely with the dark, uh, darker seats that are in the foreground. It's very nice, but you also have the background that's a little bit blurred out, but you can actually still see what's going on. The framing and the focus was the key things that I really liked about this photo. Okay, so the third photo or example is this one. Um, this, again, has good composition. You know what's happening in the photo. It's telling a story. Um, it's well composed. Uh, the composition is there. Um, so yeah, it's just a very nice overall picture and you gather a quick little story with that picture. We're gonna go for a little walk in the woods and actually try these techniques out in real life and like try and focus and see how long it actually does take to get these photos. Okay, so um, we are out in the woods hunting for two pictures, I think. But um, just listen to this. Super nice, super peaceful. It's so nice and peaceful. I love it. So, as I'm walking, I'm loving the the trees right here in this certain position with the sun um, I'm really loving the composition and I think that's something that will make just a great picture that composition those lines um, so I'm gonna try and grab a picture of that right now instead of just pulling out my camera whipping it out and snapping that picture I'm actually gonna frame it nice framed picture and think about it and take the extra time so I actually have a good nice picture Um, but I still love it for a non-planned picture and I think that taking the time actually made it a much better picture than just quick snapping it. great example of taking the time, comp uh, getting a good composition on your photo, and shooting through something. Also, angles. I tried a bunch of different angles right there. I was like, Ch -ch 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 -ch. all over the place. That was a great photo. Okay, so apparently I missed Place that I had this one photo idea, but we're gonna go to the second location that I had in mind and uh, see what comes out there. There might might be a lot of people there though, because it's a popular spot. All right, you can kind of see what we're about to walk on. All right, so the goal here take that view and make it an interesting, well-composed photograph. 
Instead of just standing here and snapping the picture, we're gonna think about it and use those techniques. So let's go. A great view, but not a great picture. Um, I'm gonna try one more thing. I'm gonna try throwing the long lens on, see what we get out of that. The long lens was a lot more successful than the wide angle. It really got us to nail that center focus and have nice, crispy, um, bokeh around the side, really framing it very nicely. Um, the long lens worked for this. Okay, I was uh, just enjoying the view for a little bit, but, uh, but I think it's time to call this a wrap. So, I will See you back at the office. Well, unless something interesting happens on my way back to the car. I'll definitely film it. All right. So the summary for can YouTube teach photography? I think the answer is yes, YouTube can teach photography. But I also think it's a little bit mixed. Anybody can pick up a camera, pick up a phone, and take a picture. It's actually learning how to take a good picture, taking a picture that has story, that's actually telling us something, that's conveying a story. I think that is where YouTube teaches us. That's where we can take these examples, these angles, um, uh, the composition, the leading lines, all points to a story in a photograph. So. It's easy to go out on a walk through the woods and just snap pictures. But while you're walking through the woods and you want to snap a picture, just looking at the scene, seeing what story you want to tell out of it, taking the time to see what would convey that story and give that story more of a focus um, and taking that time, that's what's going to make your photos stand out more. So, can YouTube teach photography? Yes, it's taught me photography, it's taught uh, my brother photography, and I think it is a very handy thing when you wanna up your photo game. So thank you all for watching this first episode of Can You To Teach. Um, I hope it was inspirational, hope uh, maybe it gets you out to take better photos. Uh, I hope that you learned something from it, hope you were entertained. Um, with all that being said, uh, follow me on Instagram. I'll link it down in the description below. Um, if you want to get a Wonder Less Films t-shirt, I'll link that in the description below. Um, it supports the channel. Give this a thumbs up if you like this series, if you want to continue this series. Um, I enjoyed shooting it. I like shooting it and I like the thought process that this series has uh, and I hope you do too. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you all liked it. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will hopefully see you in the next one.